Welcome to Allie's Attic Show, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is and a man who, he's a young man, and he's absolutely amazing. He's extremely talented. He's an emerging rock artist that plays, sings, and writes it all. He does it all himself, you guys. He's 16 years old. Please welcome Griffin Tucker. Hi, Griffin. Thank you so much for having me, Allie. Thanks for coming on. How's life going? It's going pretty good. Um, I, I just finished uh, my sophomore year, so I'm about to be a junior, so... Awesome. Just flying by. I know, right? It does that. Get used to that, Griffin. <laughs> so, okay, you blow me away. I've I listen to your songs over and over and over again. Number one, I'm a Griff fan, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, I cannot believe all the stuff that you've accomplished and how good you are for being 16 years old. Um, it just it, it seriously it does it blows blows me away. And I love I'm going to read this from your bio because I love this. So how does a 16-year-old rock musician crack today's music code? First, you must have a disobedient music spirit. That says it all right there. That can surpass the industry saturated by musicians chasing beats. Second, you must obtain enough cultural significance, as most famous rockers have done, in stirring passion and deconstruction of the norm. If that doesn't describe an artist, I don't know what does. That I loved that. I had to get it. I was getting that in there somewhere. <laughs> So Griffin, <laughs> tell me your story. Like, when did you start on this epic journey? Oh my! <laughs> the campfire. It all started on a fateful day. Um, it, I, I guess it all started when I went to um, a guitar store with my family because I was four years old and I couldn't stay at home by myself. Um, but I, I went. I went to the guitar store and I, and I started to get bored. I was like, "Hey, mom, can I go to the drum section, please?" <laughs> She's like, oh, I don't know. Let's put it up. It's not good. Okay, just just let me go. So I went to, I, and of course, being a four year old, I just hit every jump that I could. Um, and I don't, I don't know what it was. I was just so, I just gravitated so much towards it. <laughs> and I kept going back and kept going back. And two years later, or maybe when one or two years later, I got my first drum set, which was electronic, and um, it had a volume knob, which was. Perfectly convenient for my parents, <laughs> so they can turn it up and down. Um, but um, after that, I just kept practicing. I picked up piano. I took about six months of lessons before I got tired of my teacher. Um, <laughs> and then, and then once I uh, once once I was out of music school, I was trying to. I can't remember. I can't remember if I was trying to find a band, but I I know that. My music teacher, who was teaching me guitar at the time, told me that there was there was this um, group of four guys who were looking for a drummer, and who, and who could also sing a lot of high notes for a Beatles tribute band. I was like, well, sign me up because of course I I've been listening to the Beatles since I was three. Mm -hmm. but that that was pretty much that was and still is my favorite band. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got into that band playing drums and singing. Lead and backing vocals, um, and eventually I would work my way up to uh, getting up front playing guitar. And I remember the first time I did that, it was just so exhilarating because uh, up to that point I had just been like behind the drums and people's eyes were averted to the other guys. But once I got up there, all the eyes were on me, and I'm like, "Whoa, what's going on?" Um, <laughs> but um. I, I I I loved it from the first time I did it, and I just could I couldn't get enough of it. Wow! And um, so once I uh, once I uh, finished doing the Beatles tribute band, um, I was going to my music school, and I saw this poster for um, this. It, it just said Zendaya backing band wanted, or something to that effect. So. I had, I had no projects going on at the time, so I was I was thinking, why not? So I flew out to California, and I went to the auditions. There were like two hundred or two hundred to three hundred people there. Wow! And and I was I was like in line. The line like it went throughout the whole store and even went outside. So I was like, there's no way that I can compete with these guys. Um, uh. but um. <laughs> and they were twice as tall as me. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But, um, big pack, big they, big things come in small packages. Keep going. I just want to mention too, uh, Zendaya is a Disney artist, so okay, keep keep going with your story. <laughs> yes. Um. And while, while I was waiting, one of her dancers, um, uh, like went out to look at all the people in the line, and she saw me, and she was like, "Oh my goodness, you're the cutest thing! I just need to take you to the front of the line." <laughs> I was like, "What?" And before I knew it, I was at the front of the line, like, at the door. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I, 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 I auditioned for drums and bass, which I was, I was, com- was, I, which I was comfortable on at the time. Mm-hmm. But um, after I even flew home, um, Zendaya's team had looked me up and saw that I could play a lot more instruments. So I ended up being a quote-unquote featured artist. Wow. Ooh, ah. <laughs> um, and I and I pl- and I played uh, guitar, keyboards, and I even did a bass tool. Wow. <laughs> um, oh my god. Um, when I got to tour the United States, I got to go to um New York, California, I got to go to Chicago, and I even got to go to uh I can't remember. I, th- I think it, I know it was in um the Budweiser Theater it's now called. Oh. I don't um, know where that is. <laughs> that that was cool. Okay, I mean, I'm ca- um, I'm in Canada, so you <laughs> you've lost me already. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after I finished doing that, um, at age eleven, people, I, he was eleven when he did yes. this. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> after that, I had, um, I was still at my music school, and one of the teachers there was like, "Hey, I want I want to form this Kiss tribute band." This really young Kiss tribute band. I was like, "There's no way there's going to be a young Kiss tribute band." But boy, was I wrong! <laughs> um, I um, I, I went in. It was it was called Kiss Camp because he wasn't sure if it was going to take off. Um, but little did he know. <laughs> um, but what, once once I gotten in there, it, it was decided that I would be the lead vocalist and guitarist, also known as the Paul Stanley of the group. Ooh. And it was it was quite a daunting task, but um but once I got up on stage I I just immediately just started running around and singing all the high notes and being crazy. Um I, I, I loved it. I, I love singing all the all the all the good songs. Actually I can't remember what I've sung now. But did I you, they were good songs. They are good songs. Did you did you put on did you put on makeup? Did you like dress yes. like? Oh my god, that is yes, so cool! I, I put on the Star Child makeup. <gasps> oh my god! So I want to rock and roll all night. Uh, there's so many yeah. good Kiss on Beth and okay. Anyways, go on. <laughs> <laughs> um. So after I finished doing that, actually, I'm trying to remember. I think I started my solo career. I think two years before I had started the Kiss Should Be Band. Um. And at, and I really wanted to dedicate a lot of time because I really I I really wanted to do this for the rest of my life if at all possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started off with my first song, "Girlfriend," which which was done to a beat because of this deal with this guy Patrice Wilson. Um, and after after I'd done that, I was determined to like I I wasn't exactly satisfied with the beat as much as I could be. Mm-hmm. So I was determined to like learn every instrument that I could so I could make my own music and like backing tracks and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and my first gig I remember it was in, um, it was in Austin at the, I know it was at like a marathon. Okay. I was at one of the little like stations where they'd run by. Um, um. And I, I had been doing so I've been doing songs to my own backing tracks. So I'd like lay down like drums and bass and have like rhythm guitar where a solo would be, um, and maybe some backing vocals just so I could do it all by myself. I didn't have to like hire a band. Um, which was nice. It it was definitely nice, but I I definitely love I definitely love being with a band because there's not there's it's just predictable once you have the same backing tracks every single night. Mm-hmm. There's no spontaneity to it. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like Led Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin is a powerhouse. Yeah, 
you don't, you, you, and you almost don't know where to look. You have Robert Plant screaming his lungs out, hitting some wickedly high notes. You have Jimmy Page playing guitar with a bow, like doing blazing guitar solos. You have John Bonham on drums. <laughs> yes, with, with with the stamina of a construction worker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have John Paul Jones playing keyboards and bass at the same time. You mm-hmm. just don't know where to look. Yeah, exactly. And the songs and the songs are never the same two nights in a row, which is which I think is the best part about actual bands. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess that, I guess that leads me to where I am now. I've I've released a lot of originals. I've been I've been led to a lot of places thanks to the amazing Griffin Army. Yeah, um, let's talk about Griffans. I love the fact that you can incorporate fans into your name, by the way. And they absolutely yeah. are in love with you. Like, oh my god. <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> that you have so many fans. And I love that they're called Griff fans. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm, really, I'm really thankful for I'm really thankful for all of them. I actually just released my new CD, which I think we're going to get to later. Yes, we are. Um, but yeah, that, I guess that's my story. Well, it's an amazing story. Now I'm going to fill in the blanks because it's even more amazing, people. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> like you said, your legacy of stage experience started at eight years of age and has continued with a full cycle of alternating years, learning to play each instrument. Now let me talk about the instruments you play. You play drums, piano, bass, mandolin, and ukulele, just to name a few. Like... Nothing like learning how to do everything, Griffin. <laughs> um, now, we've already talked about touring with um, Zendaya from a Disney artist. You've also played as a solo artist at the House of Blues. That is enormous. I mean, everybody knows yeah. what the House of Blues is. You've played the Granada, the Gas Monkey, Gillies, and Westfield Presents London, just to name a few. And you also were selected, and I love this, to be in the Beatles documentary, Scream and Shout, 31 Days That Changed America Forever. Yes, I, I guess I kind of lost over that. <laughs> <laughs> so... What character did you play? Well, in, in Scream and Shout, I was actually, I, I didn't play, like, a character. I was, I was just um, a person they interviewed about, like, how the Beatles have impacted me, because, of course, the Beatles have been and still are my favorite band. Um, and it was just me just talking about the Beatles and how, how I love them so much. And also, I played, um, I think one song was featured in the, in the film. I think I think I did Dear Prudence. Okay, awesome. That is so awesome. So, okay, let's continue because there's more. <laughs> at the age of 13, um, you won the Texas 10 Under 20 Guitar Competition at the Dallas International Guitar Festival. I just can't. Oh yeah, that, that was a big. That was actually a really big deal. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> that is a big deal. Now, you were also a contestant on The Voice. Um, nobody picked him, you guys. Blake, Adam, whoever else was a judge on there, you guys are crazy. Um, <laughs> they were amazed that it was you when they turned their chairs around. Um, and it was, you're a very young, talented rock guitarist accompanied by a mature voice characterized by riffs, emotion, and control. Adam must have like been kicking himself because Adam is really good on the guitar. So I'm sure once he turned around and saw you, he was like, ah, <laughs> So don't stop. Keep keep trying. I I mean, you're doing well on your own. You don't need the voice. Anyway, <laughs> in 2016 and in 2017, Griffin won three categories at London's prestigious Fab Charts Awards for Best Vocalist, oh, ah. Best Video. You can do that after everyone. Best Video <laughs> and Best Song. Three categories, people. In 2017, you were nominated by your fans Griff fans, to be Indie Guitarist of the Year in London, and you won by a landslide, which does not surprise me at all. Now, <laughs> you were also nominated in three out of three categories at Nashville's famed Josie Awards for Artist of the Year, Entertainer of the Year, and Vocalist of the Year. And last but not least, <laughs> and there's more, I'll get to more, um, you were asked to join the prestigious Brotherhood of Guitar, of the guitar. Yes. Um, I was, I was asked, I think, I, I know uh, Robert Knight is, um, 
pretty up there with the Brotherhood of Guitar, and he's been like photographing like amazing artists. I think I think he's even photographed like Jimmy Jimmy Hendrix and Jimmy Page like in the in the in the late sixties and seventies and onward. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 super stoked to be in the Brotherhood of Guitar. That is so cool. I'm so I'm so I am so beyond happy for you. It's like I don't know. I'm just I love that you're doing so well. Like I just absolutely adore you. Now you also were Thank on. You. You're welcome. You were on American Idol this season, um, or the season that just ended. Actually, um, you didn't make it, which I still think judges are crazy. Um, but Katy Perry actually called you a young Paul McCartney, and I can see where she's getting that from. Um, because that's, you were, you're timeless, Griffin. Like, even though you're doing, you're current, you're timeless. And that is the best thing an artist can bring to the table. Because then you're not putting yourself in a box. You're not being, you know, the top 20 on the radio right now and all sounding the same. You sound like Griffin. And don't Thank ever you. stop. Don't ever stop. <laughs> now, <laughs> believe it, um, your debut EP dropped this summer and was an instant Griffin fave. And the album rocks like none you've ever heard in recent times. And when you start to wonder how many great musicians helped bring this amazing album to life, it was just him. It was just Griffin. He did it all. He did it all. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of I'm really proud of Believe It, the song, and the entire CD. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad because I feel like I've come into my own style. Because with songs like Girlfriend and Need You Badly and Gotta Get the Girl and all those songs, they're, I, I, I'm so proud of those songs. I think they're great songs, but I, they're, they really weren't my style. And I really feel like I've come into my own on this record. Yeah, well, I love, like I said, I love, the, I love the record. But anyways, okay, so now, do you just, do you just perform by yourself? Do you have a band backing you? Explain to everybody how, I know how you perform, but just explain to everybody how you perform. Like, are you a one-man show? Well, at the moment, I am performing with um, my band, Rick and Tucker, and the Real Rock Revolution. Ooh. They'll be coming to your town, rocking the house down. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You were so funny. I have. I love your sense of humor. The thing that I love, Beth, uh, just so everybody knows, I talked to Griffin. Obviously, everybody that's come on my show, I talked to them before the interview, and then I obviously talked to them during the interview. The one thing that struck me was number one how mature he is, but he still has that 16 year old kind of laugh, and he he he's humble. I mean, for being <laughs> as talented as he is, and is doing as many things as he is, he's just like talking to your friend it's just it blows me away because if anybody if anybody follows him you will see his griffans and i mean they are oh my god i don't want to say rabid because that just sounds wrong but they love griffin let me tell you and <laughs> <laughs> to have people like that backing you must be so amazing and you're still so I mean, humble yeah they're, 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 they're really the reason why i've gotten to a lot of a lot of places i wouldn't have I wouldn't have gone to London without them. They actually, we did a GoFundMe and they donated like $2,000 or something like that. Which oh my was God. Really, really amazing. And of course I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had the chance to be scouted for The Voice or scouted for American Idol if it weren't for their support and their, just, just their amazing support. That is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> I just want to adopt you. Well, you already, you have, you have parents. <laughs> I just love, I love talking to you. Okay, so Griffin, you've been doing this since you were three, basically, but eight, you started on the stage. You've done so many different things and been scouted, like you said, for The Voice and American Idol. If you had any kind of advice to give a new artist that was just starting out or even somebody that was out there, just from what you've gone through, what kind of advice do you think you'd give them? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I, I, I really think my two main things are Stay true to yourself and don't give up. If you stay true to yourself, then you're gonna love what you do, and that's gonna that's really gonna show. Because people all of my life have told me that I need to go either into pop, country, or if I really wanted to sell out, do rap. But I I, I really I I truly persisted, and I I wanted to make sure that. I had the chance to bring rock and roll back. Oh my God. So stay true to yourself and don't give up. Of course, I've, I've been doing this 
I've been doing this for half my life. Yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it for anything else. Um, so, so just, I guess that's the two big things. Just stay true to yourself and never give up. And you should be smooth sailing from there, partner. Yeah. And that's great advice. Everybody, he's 16 years old. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to keep saying this because he has such amazing stories and amazing success and amazing fans and amazing words of wisdom. I just, you blow me away, Griffin. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm <laughs> such a fan. Like I'm fangirling so bad right now. It's not even funny. Okay. <laughs> so what two songs are we going to hear from you? Well, Allie, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're going to hear <laughs> some kind of love song, which is the ballad of my new CD. And also the title track and my own personal favorite, Believe It. Yes. Which has... A, which has a drum solo, a bass solo, and a guitar solo. Oh my god! <laughs> I've missed. I've listened to both songs, and everybody's going to hear them once I put it up on my website. I know you love "Believe It." I love "Believe It" too. But I'm sorry, some kind of love song. I'm a girl. <laughs> I love rock ballads. I mean, I am, like, obviously, I was born in the 60s, so of course I love Led Zeppelin. I love Fleetwood Mac. I love the Moody Blues. I love all those amazing artists, Alan Parsons Project, all of them. Um, but I also love the 80s bands. I mean, White Snake, ACDC. ACDC is one of my favorite bands. Um, and you bring that back, and it excites me because it needs to be brought back. I like pop. Thank you. I'm not going to say I don't like pop because I do. I listen to pop. But it's getting tired and I listen to rap but it's getting tired and I listen to you know it's getting give me something new give me something that is going to excite me and light a fire under my butt and get me grooving and rocking and turning tunes up and that's what you do Griffin and I cannot thank you enough for doing that because for a headbanger like me <laughs> I am so so happy that you're doing that and don't ever ever stop so Everybody can buy your music online, wherever they purchase their music online. They can also go to your website, which is griffintuckermusic.rocks. It's going to be up on my website. People can just click on the link, go directly to you, find out more about yourself, see your videos, see more of your songs, and see you. <laughs> you're just, you're amazing. Um, and uh, I just want to tell everybody, like, follow this. He's Griffin, you're 16 years old. You're this successful now. Imagine yourself in 10 years, 20 years. You're going to be a Led Zeppelin. And I believe it in my very soul. So don't ever stop doing what you're doing. Please, for me, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sure hope that I'll, I'll be as good as the greats, like Led Zeppelin and, and Kiss and ACDC and Queen. Yeah. I, oh, I, Queen. And, and of course the Beatles. Yes, of I, course I the mean, Beatles. I, I've been working my whole life to do that, and I, and I hope to accomplish that. Well, you're well on your way. <laughs> well on your way. Um, <laughs> I can't see. I can't see anything going wrong unless you stop. Um, so I want to say, <laughs> if I haven't said enough to let you anybody know that I am absolutely in love with Griffin. Um, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you for being you. Thank you for making me laugh. <laughs> and oh my goodness, you're amazing. Yeah, so are you. Thank you for being humble, and thank you for just. The music, like, thank you, because you make my day, and I love this. I, I your songs are in my playlist, Griffin. It's on my. I play it all the. It's I hear it every day. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh much. my goodness. Stop it. <laughs> okay, look what you're doing to me. <laughs> I've reverted back to a 16 year old. Stop it. Okay. So, anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on my show. Of course, Sally. I had, I had a lot of fun. And <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on the Ali's Attic Show. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. Cheers.